Hello and welcome to a brand new episode on the Mission Shunya podcast. First, thank you for helping Mission Shunya gain more traction every other week. I am continuing to get an increasing number of listeners and people who write back to say that they have found this very useful. It definitely means a lot to me. I will continue to keep raising the bar as we cross episode 50 and go further. Again, missionchunya at gmail dot com is the ID if you would like to reach me. Or you can as always tag Mission Junya on a social media post across Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. On that note, let us listen to this week's story of Helpers Green. Karan Rastogi, an entrepreneur who runs this award-winning enterprise, shares the story of how he got inspired to turn waste into useful products. A quick note for all the global audience: the flower waste that Karan mentions in the story is a very particular problem in Indian cities. especially around temples converting them into useful products is definitely a big positive so let's listen in to the story hello karan welcome to the mission junior podcast let's begin with the why what was your intrinsic motivation to start helpers green so i'll begin with a small uh, story so imagine yourself sitting on the banks of the river ganges and listening to the chant of om jay jagdish Hmm. and see hundreds of lamps lit up and see people praying their hearts out with the belief that ganges would listen to all their griefs and sorrow a strong bond of faith is created much beyond the understanding of scientific logic and reasoning not only this we around 400 million people rely on the sacred river for their daily needs and resources true ganges has touched the lives of uncountable people in their new river ways and earned that respect of ma ganga as as on the call it in india but what is disheartening to see that people not only discharge the waste but are also polluting the rivers in the name of religious offerings the devotees throw tons and tons of flowers and other religious items to make sure that the that their prayers are being offered the religious discharge might look like a very tiny speck in the ocean of the tons of industrial waste that flows into the ganges but as per the un number 80 Lakh metric tons of flour waste is disposed in the Ganges every year. That's a lot. That's a lot. So upon so one basic question that struck my mind when I returned from Warwick Business School, and I started visiting the temple uh, because my father was not well. So it's a family tradition to go to the temple regularly, and that that was supposed to be one of the biggest temples in Kanpur, located on the bank of the Ganges. So one day I was thinking about it, and I saw what. i can do to make sure that people don't offer flowers and don't use so much of real flowers but i came to a conclusion that i cannot stop the people from what they believe in true but what i can do is to make sure that the waste can be curated into something better thereby creating a circular economy so that was the motivation that started help us green So when I visited the temple, I used to see a huge heap of flowers lying outside the temples and on the banks of the Ganges, where cows, goats, and monkeys used to litter the entire place. So we go to temple for our peace of mind. For example, we like Iskon. Why? Because it's so clean. You are not allowed to offer anything. It's so clean. Why do we like Somnath? Because it is so clean. So that is the essence of a temple or a, or any place of worship, for that matter. but seeing the plight of the indian temples that made me realize that something should be done for this and that is how i started with this helpers green that's a nice little short story clearly describing you have clear motivating factors to get started with helpers green now motivation is something everyone gets motivated to do something but how did you get on that and how did you convert that motivation into action how did starting from segregating waste to then turning it into a big opportunity and a business how did that happen so uh, like i said that there were a lot of flowers that was going into the river so i contacted my childhood friend ankit agarwal then ankit was studying innovation management in uh, sibm pune so there he asked me that if he has some pro- if if i have some project so i said this is i am thinking upon so he said can he take can he take up that project as a pilot in pune I said okay, so he launched a small program known as I Green, 
and then he did a small pilot and then he started making a vermi compost that was a small project of a, a, a college project so that gave us the validation that yes something like this is possible then we came down then when he asked me that he wants to come down to kanpur because he has a family here so and he has some family he has a business as well so we said okay came down we discussed in this meanwhile we researched on on various other products that could be used that could be made from this flower waste so it was colors soaps incense sticks so we thought of first going with incense sticks because the color market is very festival centric true and incense stick is something that is used in every household so we thought let's go with that and then let's see how it goes so that is how we started help us dream that's again very interesting to know that you kind of found a collaborator in the space and then you got together and actually dis- deciding on the problem statement and then going through the solutions on what you wanted to launch what we call typically as the product market fit mm-hmm. now the sector that you operate i mean as when you started a few years back i'm sure it was not as organized as it is today because the space everyone's probably trying to do this work around the principles of circular economy and the sustainability aspects but when you started i'm sure there was no nothing structured no formal value chain in place especially in the area that you operate in india mm-hmm. so how did you get about go about creating this value chain so firstly when we started uh, operating with uh, so our vision was very clear from day one to be honest it was uh, to make a women centric unit firstly and to employ the rural women, women because they are the ones who are reject who have a good potential to grow but in in the same time are not in a very good condition like to be honest if i say many of them are been beaten up by their husbands for alcohol abuse or marital problems whatever but if so once they started working in our facility so first we did not have a facility for for two years we worked as self help group models that gave us the confidence that yes these people are ready to work that gave us the initial push that we can move ahead in this direction and when tata trust came in in 2017 then we thought of having our own facility so that is when we uh, took a lease took a land and then constructed the building and then we had a bus service we provided all the basic facilities like open defecation free toilets clean drinking water tea twice a day with some snacks and a proper sitting arrangement lunch time it it was like a proper proper facility because i had i had the experience of running a shoe factory so i know how to do it i knew so uh, the basic challenge that i faced was convincing the people to come to my facility because they firstly they were not ready to work secondly they have uh, it's like a uh, people don't tend to move out of their comfort zones so it was hard to convince them but one, but when they started working and they started gaining that confidence that helped us to grow i mean if i if i'm not wrong those are the people behind our success because they worked outside the comfort zones to make sure that the flowers are segregated the flowers are dried crushed made into incense sticks so these are the people who never learned how to make incense sticks we taught them and that zeal to learn and to move ahead in life that is the biggest change and not only this they are convincing the future generations to make sure that they don't follow as the community because when because uh, i'll i'll t- i'll tell you a very good e- example yes when the bus used to come to the locality they used to have some sense of pride wonderful that they are growing people who pp because we used to have a bank we gave them bank account so they used to save that money and buy am- am- amenities like fridge so for us fridge is a very normal thing but for them fridge along with aqua guard or so clean drinking cold water in scorching heat is luxury for them fair enough <laughs> yes and that is what that taught us the simple values of life for us 
of a basic any person it's roti kapda makan for them is self respect they gain that self respect and pride out just for coming here and working for us so those are the people who are responsible for my growth or for the growth of helpers green for say we were just if you can say a two people who were trying to make a difference but the actual difference is them the husbands don't beat them much now the husbands don't force them anything now they are now they have become independent the, the new man of the house this is wonderful i mean that's a nice little story you know rather than just building a business out of nothing you just you're going over and beyond what you wanted to do in terms of building a business that that is very sustainable and is good for the planet but you're also looking at other social aspects of livelihoods if i were to put it that way yes so that's wonderful but in terms of how you moved ahead with the value chain like for example you did mention about segregating waste drying them crushing them and then making into products i'm sure gathering waste is a big challenge and then deciding what is the actual product and uh, how did it come to market how long did it take for you to kind of establish your good presence in the market the the research for the product took about 2 to 3 years from 2000 to 2015 we did only research 2015 we launched a brand under the name of sticks and stones the like incense sticks and the cones were named as stones so sticks and stones we launched a brand in 10 fragrances and uh, we launched our vermicompost as mitti nice so interesting concept about about mitti was like it's a vermicompost we collected the waste from suppose ccds also so that we improve the nutrient level but the packaging was the discarded whiskey boxes of 100 pipers wonderful <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that served a different purpose <laughs> yes so we asked one of the factory vendors that he has a huge he used to have a huge lot of boxes which were discarded and no, nothing has to do so we asked them to just convert this change the inside wrapper and make sure that oh, no label is there on top and then we stuck our label and place it in in the market for first two years it worked well the incense sticks also worked well because that was a new concept entirely for india we were among, among the first people to launch such a thing and we were um, we, we we were um, among the first to make sure that something like this exists in the ecosystem because people are having a hard time to believe that aisa bhi kuch hota hai even the pandits and the pujaris so much so my family was also not ready for it fair enough <laughs> so getting that in, into the market has taken us a lot of uh, hard work plus the b plant competitions worked out really well for us i mean that was a time i i feel b plant competitions were at their zenith they had so uh, in 2015 when we first won a iit competition iit up, upstart then we won isb idea then we won tata social challenge and then we won wotan in wotan india economic forum then dbs nus so those are the few things that helped our brand image go up and the people got to know that something is changing these two people are trying to bring a change in the ecosystem and we somehow managed to do that that's really a good journey i mean that's a good start and uh, as a, someone who's used your product recently when when i see the product portfolio and when i know the product it's like wow it's well defined you have different products that represent the flavors of different states mm-hmm. and it's all well very well packaged you move on from whiskey bottles yeah what is a boxes to like properly packaged boxes now so there's a good change definitely so how how do you see this moving forward so what is in line in the next few years for you so in line for the next few years i see incense market is majorly dominated by the three to four major players who sell in masses and the masses are sells in like packs of rupees 10 and 12 for us since the op- operating cost is very high we cannot think of going to that market level i mean that is the barrier because the operating cost is very high so what i feel right now that so these social startups if i say in general can have a better working model if big corporates 
सपोज आई टी सी और साइकिल एंड मैनी आर द बिग प्लेयर्स दे कोलेबरेट विद आर मॉडल एंड लॉन्च रेंज दैट गिवज अ समथिंग पुश टू बोथ द सोशल ऑन्टरप्रीन्योर्स एज वेल एज टू द बिगर प्लेयर्स that is true uh, that is really a good solution because i'm sure even they would want to have a different product portfolio different line of products that convey the message of sustainability and um, yes you rightly mentioned sustainability basic meaning of sustainability is to sustain for the next few years or the next few decades when your operating cost is so high how how are you going to sustain how is when we call a business sustainable that means he has enough money to run that business fair enough sustainability just doesn't mean eco and eco friendly and green sustainability means to support to make sure that the business keeps running and to and to ensure that if we have a good collaboration with big corporates that gives us the push that gives us a good working order so that your factory is continuously running you are continuously making the change for them it's a very small thing but for you it is like a dream come true because your vision is coming clearer true so that is my perception of sustainability to make sure that if you keep going in your business you have to have certain amount of connects to make sure that it keeps going without compromising on your vision and mission that is really true that is a very good definition of sustainability as well it's not just about the product being sustainable eco friendly planet friendly it's all also about having the whole ecosystem of and the business being self sustaining self sustaining yes that's a good way to put it and uh, that's that's a interesting thought in that line now we did talk about sustainability which reminds me that we did i mean we are not yet out of the covid scenario but uh, i'm sure covid did have an impact on all small businesses on all emerging businesses so i did hear about a lot of innovative products from you in that space so how did you how did you turn around from the covid times and how did you move forward from that i'm glad you asked so covid has been one of the best times of my life to be fair wonderful <laughs> so in covid we uh, since ev- ev- everything was shut the temples were closed and the work the women entrepreneurs who work for us they were also in a state of dismay that what dismay that what should we do so we made sure that since we were not very high on money reserves so we made sure that they get their food ration monthly month by month i mean i i used to provide them to make sure that they have sufficient to eat and to suffice their family that's a great gesture firstly secondly then we got in touch with uh, uttarakhand and the karnataka government to make sure because the farmers were throwing away the crops true the flowers which are being used in weddings or in temples are not were not being used and they were throwing it away so we thought let's turn it around and make sure that we have something beneficial so we taught them through online training how to dry the flowers and how to make incense or colors or paper so there was a group of 3 to 4 people um there was someone from bangalore anamika bhesh there was someone from uh, gaya mr uh, he he runs a project happy hands so we both we all three of us made a small group and made sure that we give them online training we tell them how to dry the flowers how to make incense how to so happy hands make dyes so we taught them how to make dyes out of flowers so we had a good response we try to change the life of about 25 to 30 farmers in in the uttarakhand they still contact us asking that if we have something that because they have their crops are still not being used to, to their full potential and if they don't grow for one year the next cycle is destroyed true so then they they thought that uh, we so they gave it to us An- anamika even asked few of his a few of her friends in gurgaon to make sure that they take the lily so a guy from dehradun took his maruti and drove down to gurgaon and sold his entire lilies to five societies at a good price and he was happy about it so these were the small little things that happened in um, during this pandemic another most important thing what happened is 
moving ahead i changed my entire packaging to zero waste packaging wonderful so in that the paper is made of tulsi infused seeds so once you're done with the packaging you soak it in water for 2 days and plant it and tulsi seedlings grow out of it so you you're using an upcycle product with a zero waste packaging one of the only product in india i feel as of now because no one has ever tried to package the product in seed paper packet nice so i feel pandemic has been good for us to make sure that we think beyond our needs that's another little nugget of wisdom i mean and these are the stories that i hear i mean entrepreneurs pivoting from one idea to another and kind of leveraging their skill sets and looking at the challenges and then turning them into opportunities and glad that you had a good turn around in during this pandemic and in fact benefiting more people rather than just selling your product to customers who are who you don't know but here you are benefiting the entire value chain that's really wonderful karan on a final note what is it that you expect from people because a lot of people listen to the podcast and they always feel they have to do something how can they contribute be it say someone who has a business idea or someone who is looking to collaborate with you how can they help you in this journey see it takes a team of many many people to make sure that a mission that is small to convert it into a national movement if everyone join hands and have that same sense of perception that yes we have to do something for the waste i'm sure india is going to be a very very clean country and if anyone wants to start a business i am happy to extend my knowledge base so that they can themselves set up a unit in their t- in their hometown and start a small business that's that's really wonderful i'll definitely put the links to connect with you in the episode show notes definitely because again the audience is just not in india people from around the world also would want to upcycle because upcycling is kind of the big thing now big thing now yes people just don't want to recycle things they see like well, okay what can i do better with this yes i will definitely put the links to connect with you and uh, because it's all about collaborating as you rightly said it's all about getting coming together and then progressing in this front yes this is a wonderful work that you have been doing and uh, glad to know the progress that you have made so far so good luck good luck with all the future endeavors and uh, thank you so much yeah we definitely look forward to more amazing products from your end thank you girish And yes that was yet another success story of how an entrepreneur converted a problem and turned it into a sustainable value proposition I have been following the work of Karan and the Helpers Green team for a while and I should admit that they have been very innovative with their products in fact I have tried a few of them in the past so please feel free to check their website or follow them on Twitter all the links as usual will be in the show notes section of the podcast also on the website missionchunya.com I believe they also undertake global shipping so do check them out and let's keep the momentum going episode 50 is coming up next so feel free to pass the mission junior podcast link to friends and colleagues i'll be back in 2 weeks time until then this is girish shivakumar and as always thank you for listening